and uh, some of it from eight or nine years ago, so doing that. Dan, I know if people watching had the opportunity, probably the first thing they would ask you is, okay now, is Ben really that tame? Well, it's a grizzly bear, and uh, if we didn't have that bear, we'd have a real hard time doing the show. We have uh, about six different bears that we use on the show, and they aren't comparable to her at all. Ben is really a female. It's not a male. Really tame. And you have to understand that it is a grizzly bear in a way. It does have the potential to be dangerous. So keep that in the back of your mind and don't get too confident. I don't think anybody will get hurt. And it's very easy for a bear to, uh, to hurt somebody. I mean, they have big claws and, and teeth and they're designed to be a strong, powerful animal. And you put a man up against a bear that weighs 500 pounds and a man weighs 108, 200 pounds, he doesn't stand much of a chance. So everybody on the set is very cautious and very, very comfortable with the animal, but we give her due respect. And uh, I think it's one of the reasons this show is going so well is, I mean, she has her moments, so when she doesn't feel like working, she'll let you know, and so she doesn't work. And uh, it's just human. I mean, we put a lot of demands on that animal, like the network puts a lot of demands on our show. And sometimes I don't feel like doing things, but I have to. And sometimes the bear, she might have a toothache or, you know, uh, not feel good, and you can't push her too much. So I. I respect that animal for 12 years, and I've never seen a bear as good as that. It's the most dangerous uh, wild animal in North America because they give you no foresight or warning before the, or an, you know, they have an aggressive act. Lions, their eyes will dilate and their tail will twitch, but a bear doesn't have pulls. And when they get mad, they just turn around and grab you. So it's unexpected, and when they do grab you, you don't want to be around, you know. So we go real easy with her. Do you ever think about the fact that um, some children maybe wouldn't have the maturity to realize that this is fiction and that these are different bears than they possibly could and can? We're not just talking about bears, but what I'm getting at is, uh, do you feel a responsibility that children wouldn't try to emulate things that you do? Well, I think. Um, what you're talking about, if children emulate things that they see on television, you know, we're in a lot of trouble. I mean, with the violent shows and other things, and I think that kids uh, have a respect for animals, and children aren't going to be confronted with grizzly bears that often. There aren't that many around town. And if they do go to Yosemite or Wyoming and they do see bears, um, they, they understand that they aren't grizzly atoms and they wouldn't be out in the wilderness as their folks were along with them. And so I think everybody has to use common sense. I see a lot of people do very things with animals. I mean, at zoos and different things. Are the children the bright ones or are the adults the ones that need help? I mean, I was in um, Great Cross, Georgia, and uh, I was doing a film down there, and there was a family going through the park, and there's wild alligators that come out of the out of the swamp there, and they sun themselves on the bank. And I was going to the family, and the father was saying to his boy, well, go over there and stand next to that alligator, David, so I can take a picture of you. And the kid's crying. He says, no, I don't want to go. He says, David, go over there and stand next to that alligator. I want to take a picture of you. Now, they're thinking that they're tame because they come up out of the park and all that. And I just, I went up to the man. I said, these alligators aren't tame. I, don't make your boy go over and stand next to that alligator. Why don't you go? Well, uh, I just wanted to stand next to the alligator. And I said, well, you know, you can't do that. I mean, people would, you can't take dogs through the park. And people would take their dog from time to the bumper or something with a leash. And the alligator 
years have come out and eat dogs. People come back and it's just a leaf hanging on their door handle, you know. So I, uh, I don't want kids to put their hands in animals' mouths, you know, but at the same time, I wonder about adults sometimes, you know, and their attitudes towards wild animals. But uh, I have a lot of mothers say, please tell my son that he can't have a grizzly bear, you know. So I tell kids if, you know, you want a bear, you know, wait till you grow up and move from home so they don't have your mom yelling at you. I don't know if you work with Dan. Are they in any way at all altered as far as these claws, whatever? Well, all the animals on our show have everything, all their equipment. They have their cl claws and teeth and none of the animals are neutered or anything. And I think that it's like uh, when you declaw an animal, it's like cutting the end of your finger off. You don't function properly if somebody cut all the ends of your fingers off. And it would change your basic outlook on life. I mean, you might not know that they're gone, but it would change your whole chemistry. So when you take the claws out of a lion or off of a bear, or the teeth out of them changes their whole personality. They can become very neurotic. And all the animals in the show have all their equipment and everything. And I think that it's good for them, but at the same time, it lets you know that they have the potential to hurt you, and you have to be careful. But at the same time, they're very good with their claws. Like the bear's got all her claws and everything, and um, I see her take big trees and just pull them apart, you know, like she'll be sitting there and she'll pull them apart. And we'll give her some food, and she uses her claws. It's incredible to watch her. Like uh, chopsticks, she'll pick up a, a piece of meat or a cookie with her claws. It's just so dainty, she'll pick it up off the ground and eat it like that. So it's so nice to see the animals with their proper, you know, utensils instead of cutting them off to satisfy ourselves like so many people do. So I don't like to see people take baby lions and things and take the claws out and then when they're four or four hundred pounds they can't do anything with them. The zoos won't take them because they don't have claws. Dan, we wish you the best of luck Thank with the series and thanks for talking with us today here in Hollywood. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah,